The House of 200 Demons. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Ammons fought back tears when she told us how they fled in terror after her daughter was raised right off her bed. She says the demon sounded like this. We've waited five months. It sounded like something dead. She says she anointed the rooms with holy oil and read aloud from the Bible. But the nightmare went on and on and listened to a sound that cannot be explained by police who looked into the mysterious goings on. While two cops are talking in the basement, someone can be heard saying, hey. A swarm of black flies, unidentified wet boot prints, a 12-year-old levitating above her bed, a 9-year-old boy walking backwards up a wall, and that is just the beginning of the Ammons haunting. In November 2011, the Ammons family moved into a rental house on 3860 Carolina Street in Gary, Indiana. In 2014, the story of the 200 Demons house went public. Been a bit for a haunting. Yes. And I wanted to do a haunting, but I didn't want to do one from 1732. Oh, that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll dredge up an old hundreds-year-old... Well, in fairness, that's you know, when a lot of those happen, or that's mm-hmm. when a lot of those are born. But to find one, and again, this is I'm finding this, but something that's relatively current, even mm-hmm. for us, is, is a relatively current haunting episode. Mm-hmm. I, the year is ending, and I want to... You want to get some haunts in. You got to get some haunts in. And I was so happy that you went that route. I, I often find, too, finding something for the podcast that's different, too. Not your standard garden variety haunt is something that I strive to do. And it can be hard, you know? It is. I think haunted episodes are probably the most few and far between. Mm-hmm. Because they're generally unsubstantiated. Yes. As opposed to true crime or something strange historically. Exactly. We can go into records and get testimonies. With with ghost stuff, it can be a little dicey. So what happened between 2011 and 2014? Everything. (laughs) Nothing did not happen. Everything (laughs) happened. But what makes this case so public and we'll find troubling okay is that it heavily involves the department of child services oof or as i recall them child protective services based on my interactions with child protective services i'm not a parent mm-hmm. but i was interviewed by them as a child really oh yeah wait f- because your parents had an uh, unsafe for what what happened to you what happened to you there was w- there was a time And this is a kind of a brief time because I had moved out relatively soon after. But we straight up had rats living in the walls. Oh no! Yeah, it's it's it's, something about you. It's it's the poverty chapter of my life. wasn't extremely long, but there was, and I've just the rest of the time just been coasting on broke. Yeah, baby, just broke. Pizza, skateboard, sunglasses. Yeah, at forty eight, no rats. When you involve the 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 safety and the well being of children. It, it gets a little bit it, – it gets dicey, mm-hmm. to say the very least. And there were 800 pages of official records that were obtained by the Indianapolis Star. Whoa. Which these Indianapolis newspapers and sources are a little bit skewed, I'm finding. They really lean into – what I found was Gary, Indiana and maybe mm-hmm. the surrounding area. Very religious. Mm-hmm. Almost – Bible Belt ish. That checks. No, Indiana. I say, was on oh. a riverboat in Indiana one time, and I, I might as well have been in the deep south. They take um, their religion very seriously, and yeah. and the spirituality of it, and the idea of ghosts, and and those mm-hmm. things are not are not lost on them, and that plays a lot into the story. So some of these, and I'm not trying to say that they're good or bad in that sense, but they, they really skew heavily into. This seems very legitimate when mm-hmm. not necessarily true. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And that being said, too, it's a common thing where it's small town testimony and investigation, wherever you're from, where I'm from, wherever, can be very flawed and very skewed depending on the ideologies of whoever's investigating. And I didn't double check this, but from what I recall, and I believe I'm right, the Jacksons are from Gary, Indiana. Yeah, that's right. Don't double check it. No. But I think you're right. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, just just take my word for it. But that's that's what I also know Gary, Indiana for. Mm -hmm. And this involves the child protective department of child services. Mm -hmm. I always know it by the old. I don't know if that's the old school name. Mm -hmm. I also moved out to California with a woman who did that for a living. She worked for child protective services. I did not know that either. It's very it's a very tough job Oof, and bet. i've heard some like pretty horrific stories this is when we're living in new york you know, just it, it's it's tough and it usually comes with lower income and lack of resources and stuff like that and when you're a state person mm-hmm. sometimes your hands are tied and, and, and such so it was a, a pretty tough noble job but i wasn't really aware of, of that aspect of this so i was reading it i it, not just as a human being I'm, this is tough and kind of my personal experience with it i was yikes mm-hmm. but it also involves psychologists family members catholic priests and i got a lot of this from wkyc.com i felt they gave a lot of information that was not necessarily really skewing one way or another mm-hmm. so full disclosure i got a lot of the information from wkyc.com latoya ammons and her mother, Rosa Campbell, and their three children, seven, nine, and 12. I did not find names of them, and I think they tried to keep the names of the children out of any kind of press and such. That's I, I, different I, I, than most of the hauntings that we've talked about, where it's the kid's in the forefront. The kid's a star. So it all kind of starts with big black flies suddenly swarming their home in December in Indiana. Mm, Kind of odd. That is odd. It's pretty snowy and cold. There wouldn't be a lot of flies there. And once they thought they got rid of them, they would just come back. That's bad even if it's not supernatural. That's annoying. And then Latoya and her mother Rosa heard footsteps climbing the basement stairs. Horrifying. Creaky doors. Hate it. Hate it. No one's there. Mm. And Rosa Campbell, her mother, woke up in the middle of the night. She saw a shadowy figure of a man pacing in the living room. She got out of bed and found large, wet boot prints, but no one was there and no doors were open. No just, boots, only fr- only prints. Just just wet prints. So wet prints. Which is a little so it's not just I don't I guess it would be muddy prints. Mm. I don't know what it would be to leave a boot print, but it makes it seem fresh. Yeah. On March 10th, 2012, 2 a.m., and it <laughs> indicates, it says, normally Campbell, Ammons, and her children would have been asleep at 2 a.m. I was like, okay, that's, that makes sense. Wow, that's, okay. Uh, and they were mourning the death of a loved one with a group of friends. And I feel it should be a clue of maybe the state of mind maybe they were in, hmm. you know, a state of grieving. Everything's a, a little bit heightened. I'm guessing. The 12-year-old started levitating above the bed, no. unconscious, according to them. Yeah. They surrounded the bed and the 12-year-old and started praying. And Rosa Campbell says she remembers being terrified. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I mean, that, I that mean, checks out. Uh, uh, I would remember that, too. Yeah. I, the 2 a.m., I've mourned a couple deaths of loved ones. I was never up at 2 a.m. Do That's a level of intensity where... Yeah, you're. If you're primed to see some things, you're gonna see some things. I think. As I found, and I I looked for this, and it wasn't too hard to find, and it was something I suspected. Very religious area, mm-hmm. very religious, and susceptible to believing mm-hmm. in these things. Mm-hmm. So none of this really comes as a huge surprise. Yeah. It's people, it, it, there's not a skeptic to be found. Yes. I'll put it to you that way. That makes sense. That so makes they, sense. they will are willing to lean into anything, and, and I don't know. I, I believe people believe that they see and experience these things. Or as we found with a lot of hauntings mm-hmm. or other things, there's usually something more to it. If we've learned anything from the Amityville horror, yeah. which it, this parallels a lot of things. Totally. Or are people just 
suggesting and they're borrowing yeah. from those things. Is everyone getting carbon monoxide poisoning or not? Well, it's interesting. I, I believe that they were worried about the possible carbon monoxide poisoning in this house, but nobody mm-hmm. ever checked on it. And it was supposed to be checked and it was never checked. And they're wondering what was affecting them physically. Well, shit, case case closed. Yeah, yes, yes. It has never been confirmed that that was the case, but it was suggested. Uh, that is, seems a reasonable suggestion. They called churches. It's usually not a thing where the, the Catholic church is exorcism. Yeah, we're, we're just yeah. dying to do one. It's usually probably for a lot of reasons. One, it, it's might be negative press or they take it the way they take it. But there's always – you always find someone that's willing to do it, at least in these mm-hmm. in these instances. Officials at one church got wind of this and they recommend the family clean the home with bleach and ammonia and then use oil to draw crosses on every door and window. I wasn't really familiar with the oil. Oh, that, that seems – there's a lot of uh, botanicas around here. There's a lot of uh, Catholic – Santeria, yeah. using oils and tinctures to kind of cleanse. And yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And more esoteric branches of and I'm, I, listen, I think that's anything that helps you feel a cleansing thing. I mean, that, yeah, that's sure. what it takes. It didn't work. Mm. Huge surprise. Mm. And at the church's suggestion, she poured olive oil on three of her children's hands and feet, then smeared oil in the shape of crosses on their foreheads. So now we're just using straight up cooking oil. We're out of the more, maybe more expensive. She didn't get it on Etsy. She didn't know. No, she did not extra get it virgin on Etsy. olive oil, Costco, a bucket of. Okay. Then she met with some clairvoyance and said the family's home was besieged by more than 200 demons. There we go. 200, a nice round number. I don't know how, yeah, where you come up with that number, but that's it's a, a lot, lot of demons. It's a lot. Of, that's an impressive number. I would be scared shitless. Their explanation made sense to Campbell and mm-hmm. Ammons because it meshed with their Christian faith. Sure. I guess, yeah, I guess the fact that somebody's not a skeptic meshes with it too, right? Yeah. In, in, in a way. All of this feeds, I think we hang out in a lot of contexts we don't hang out with anyone right now, but have a lot of friends that are skeptics and that's what's perpetuated in our circles. But again, if you have a circle where people really believe and are, are very into it and, and just kind of lean in, that's what you're going to believe too. They said the best thing you can do is move, but that really wasn't an option because mm-hmm. they didn't have the money to move. Yeah. They just moved into into this house and instead as an option, okay. made an altar in the basement. Yeah. That's less expensive than moving for sure. I agree with that. Ammons covered an end table with a white sheet, mm-hmm. white candle, mm-hmm. statue of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Those get expensive. I, I, from what I gather, they had a lot of this in the home already. Okay. And I, from what I imagine, the home had already a lot of artifacts and and such built in. And we kind of find that. I think we found that with the Annalise Michelle. Yeah, about that. They that's had a right. lot of that in, in the house. So it was like, great, I already have this stuff. Totally. You're not getting any expensive fruits and vegetables, no gilded candlesticks. Don't have to hit up Etsy. No jewels, no you know peonies out of season. Yeah. Keep it simple. She opened the Bible to Psalm 91 mm-hmm. and she said, another person donned white t-shirts and wound white scarves around their heads. They burned sage and sulfur. You got to do house. that. Got to do that. That's standard. That's, just, yeah. That's standard issue absolution of demons. And they started upstairs, worked their way down, and the mm-hmm. smoke was so thick they could hardly breathe. Whoa, that's a lot of sage and sulfur. And, and Ammons drew a cross with the smoke. And whoever she was with read Psalm 91 as they moved through the house. Psalm 91, the hits. I, I have it in my memory. Yeah? Yeah, I'm not reading it. <laughs> you will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. <sighs> Whoa, that's, that's sexy as hell. I, that's, very, that's, that's my problem is everything it's, is filtered through some <laughs> cultural edifice. I don't, I grew up Jewish and I don't know that much of it, but that sounds so cool. Oh, well, relig- religion and religious artifacts and imagery is very mm-hmm. cool and interesting that's why things like heavy metal mm-hmm. satan yeah uh, that whole that thing is just it's very cool yeah I, mean, I don't know how else to put it that's true. whether i believe it or not it's cool yeah going to temple for four hours was not cool for me kabbalah getting there getting there sage and sulfur psalm 91 hell yeah for three days three days 
Three days. Money. Nothing uh, odd happened. Then things got worse. The family said the demons possessed Ammons and her children, 7, 9, and 12. The kids' eyes bulged. Evil smiles crossed their faces. And their voices deepened every time it happened. Mm-hmm. And the demons didn't affect Campbell, the grandmother, mm-hmm. because she was born with a protection from evil. Wow, that's she nice. said she, others her, have a guardian that protects them. Hmm. So the, obviously, the grand, I don't know if it was passed down or they kind of just shared this, but they, they enabled yes, each other. Yes, 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 yes. They enabled each other in their spirituality mm-hmm. and, and religious beliefs. Ammon said she felt weak and lightheaded and warm when she was possessed. Her body shook. And then she felt out of control. You can tell it's different. Something supernatural. Different than what? Normal, everyday Gary Indiana life? I mean, as far as being lightheaded, warm, and body shaking and feeling out of control. And then the youngest boy, who was seven, sat in a closet talking to a boy that no one else could see. The other boy was describing what it felt to be killed. Oh, no. That's terrifying. Rosa Campbell, grandmother, said the seven-year-old once flew out of the bathroom as if he had been thrown. And a headboard once smacked into Ammon's daughter, causing a wound that needed stitches. Mm. Do you remember the beginning of the story, how I prefaced this Mm -hmm. with the DCS, Mm -hmm. Child Protective Services? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I don't know, but that is an issue and kind of a through line through this. Mm. It's not something that I'm just guessing. Yeah. You pull it out of thin air, but saying, or could be something else. It yeah. could it could not be supernatural. It could not be that. It could be something in the middle. I, I don't know. Yeah. When kids are getting hurt, it opens up a bigger dialogue around this, for sure. The 12-year-old would later tell mental health professionals that she sometimes felt as if she was being choked and held down so she couldn't speak or move. She said she heard a voice say that she'd never see her family again and wouldn't live another 20 minutes. And some nights were so bad, the family slept at a hotel. Is that confirmed or unconfirmed, or is that just something that they're saying? Yeah, let's see the residents in receipts. You know, again, a lot of this information is coming from them and some ancillary people that Mm -hmm. are either somewhat – again, we're all in Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind as well. Finally, which I find very hopeful – I'm surprised they didn't start with this. I feel Annalise Michelle case, they did the opposite. They started with – a, a medical professional, and then mm-hmm. went to the priests and the exorcisms. Mm-hmm. Dr. Jeffrey on a Kuwu. I don't know okay. if – Definitely not pronouncing that right. On April 19th, 2012, Ammon said she told him what they were going through and hoping he'd understand. And he said, 20 years, I'd never heard of anything like that in my life. Be sure. Surprised. If he said yeah. that's the 18th time I've heard yeah, it. Yeah, it's like only 200 ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Call me when it's 400. I was scared myself when I walked into the room. He made that Mm. house call. Okay. He said he would not speak in any more detail unless Ammons had psychiatric clearance for the waiver of confidentiality that she had signed. Uh, Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't. That's word red tape. In his medical notes, he wrote that there were delusions of ghosts in the home and hallucinations. And he also wrote a history of ghosts at home and delusional. So he's taking the role of medical professional yeah but it also doesn't seem totally clear to me he's saying that they are seeing it all he's not saying that they it's i don't know it still doesn't seem that clear to me and campbell said that ammon's sons cursed on a kuu in demonic voices raging at him medical staff said the youngest boy that was lifted and thrown into a wall with nobody touching him according to a dcs report okay the boys abruptly passed out and wouldn't come to. And Rosa Campbell said she cradled one boy in her arms and Ammons held the other. Someone from the doctor's office called 911. The doctor said seven or eight police officers and multiple ambulances showed up. Everyone couldn't figure out what was happening, he recalled. And the police and emergency personnel took the boys to Methodist Hospital in Gary, Indiana. And what happens next? After a well-deserved break. Break time. Ding, 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 ding. Hi, hello, and how are you? Oof. What a week. And we hope you are well. Mm -hmm. Rebecca and I did a, we're working on a project for (laughs) Ghost Town, and we did a very COVID safe. Very COVID safe. Photo shoot. We get tested every other day. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I'm getting tested right now. That's not true. But 
we're we're very safe. We don't go out. We really only see yeah. each other, and it's safely doing that. But we um, had a photo shoot. Yeah, Rebecca which, was wearing makeup and had her hair did just right now. No, what <laughs> happened like, to that person? I look, I look, um, hundred percent right now. So I always. Look I've at looked that. at I don't the. Know what you're there's a lot about. of photos. I've looked at the photos. Ugh. Where's that person? Mm. I don't know, dr- drowning in vitamin water and uh, Jolly Rancher residue, maybe? Yeah, we had a photo. I hate photo shoots. I I regret not having photos of myself, but I also hate the process of it. So it was it was relatively painless. It was very fun. Yeah, I got my hair done, did it all up. There's some good ones in there. And this wasn't just Ugh. a vanity thing where we're, let's take pictures of ourselves. No. It was We would never, ever, I would never, ever do that. Yeah, it was actually for... <laughs> A, a project, thing. and we can always use them. Sure, sure. And I, as long as I don't look a beanbag chair, okay. Maybe we'll put some of those photos on our Patreon. Mm-hmm. Some early, some some a little er- treat. Yeah, some early preview. Not that it's showing pictures of us, but we very mm-hmm. seldomly, in the last two plus, way plus years, very seldomly do we show pictures of ourselves. No. Because I'd like to say I that. don't like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's not true. I just we'll, – we'll save the hottest ones for Patreon. Yeah, that'll be kind of – yeah, kind of our own, our OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thing. Our – yeah, just like middle-aged OnlyFans photos. And Rebecca's wearing a tight shirt in some of them. I look a potato in a lot of them. But in some of them well, – There's a lot of good ones in there. Okay, okay. There's some that are too hot for TV, I think. Too hot for TV? Yeah. Me? It depends on who we're pitching to. If, they're, yeah. if it's something – Nickelodeon. Uh, yeah, if it's browsers, yeah. we have that section <laughs> – that's right. I do. Yeah, I am wearing a tight shirt, and I have bad bras. So we'll see. I actually haven't even looked at the photos yet. Jared, at Jason sent the- me a couple of them. I don't want to look. We'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm glad we have more content. That might be coming up. We also are recording a bonus episode and a documentary episode. Yeah. So that should be up by the time you hear this. You're going to love that. And it's all at patreon.com slash ghost town pod, early mm-hmm. access to episodes with no ads or mm-hmm. talking. So you can just get the information and that is get it. Get to it. Check it out. Just get to it. There is a new YouTube video up. And it's not an episode that was on Ghost Town. It mm. was from the podcast Strange Year. Mm, it I've was heard of that one. The the mystery of Benjamin Kyle. So that episode, he woke up out of uh, unconscious. He was found at a dumpster Ugh. at a Burger King in two thousand four. I've heard no idea, that. Had no idea who he was. That's I love stories that yeah. honestly where you're just you you here's the evidence in front of you. I wonder if we might have done it. I don't know if we've done it for Patreon. I know we did it for Strange Year. No, no, because I wouldn't no. have done it. I wouldn't have yeah. done it for Strange Year and Patreon. No, it was one of your early Strange Years. It, early Strange yeah. Years. One of my, my favorite from cases, almost a year ago. From almost a year ago, but there is a video version of it that is pretty cool that mm. uh, from David Prater edited it together. You can find that at youtubecom slash Horton. Give it a mm. subscribe. It all. Helps. Thank you. Etsy sure stores does. blowing up. Oh, hell yeah. Got tons of true crime stuff on there merch, now. Merch, merch, merch. And it's all 20% off and free shipping. The March of I'm merch. just basically making 25 cents on it, but I don't Aww. care because I'm doing you're it. You're rolling in quarters. Oh, 40s. yeah. Yeah, I'm making a dollar a week. McDuck, you're just diving into a silo of change. And I'm going to work on some designs that are based on some of our episodes might be kind of fun kind of ghost townish that's very fun and then hopefully some more ghost town stuff mm-hmm. too you can find it's etsy.com slash shop i think it's a ghost of a chance shop i don't know mm-hmm. i'll link it below you can check it yeah. out if you want to that sounds very fun all this is done mm-hmm. under the firm mm-hmm. but just hand <laughs> Of our government. Yes. Brandon Gaddis, Jeanette Link, Ashley Matson, Ben Forsyth, our mayors, mm-hmm. all under the very firm, very just hand. Firmer, juster. Firmer, juster hand of Mayor Chris Witt. Hello, Chris. Let's thank our government and any of our our Patreon supporters and anyone listening to the podcast, of course, mm-hmm. if you're sharing it with somebody or letting someone know, yes. we ended up on some people's Spotify's. That was so lists. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that like warms my heart. I always I always think that's for other people. When I see yeah. the podcast, it's all good for you, and and mm-hmm. the fact that we end up on anyone's 
top anything list mm-hmm. with yeah. all the possibilities out there. Ugh. Extremely, extremely thankful. So and, fun. And, and we hope you're keeping it together. Yeah. And you can always just hit us up if you want to chat. A lot of people have been great suggestions. Got to think about what to do with all of them. Mm-hmm. And this house probably is less than 200 demons, right? Would you say? Slightly less. I haven't been in the attic yet, though, so I, I can't say for sure. Well, I want to go back to where there's at least 200 demons. Yeah, it's it's 200 or more. You're not wasting your time. I get it. So now they're at the hospital. Mm-hmm. And the hospital personnel, despite we're in Gary, the claims were a bit preposterous to them. Mm-hmm. It's pretty heavy, even for people that are, okay, maybe I'm... A Christian, I'm a Catholic, or I'm a Baptist, or I'm somewhat, even if you're Pentecostal, yeah, this is pretty heavy duty as far as information wise. So they were not taking it super seriously as far as her claims. Ammon said that because she couldn't get through to the personnel, she says, I couldn't talk to them, so I talked to God. Okay. Okay. The boys woke up in the hospital. The older boy, nine, acted normal, he was chill. He was chill. But the youngest one was screaming and freaking out. Not chill. Which makes sense. If, it's it's got to be there's, – there's trauma going on. Oh, yeah. If, if all of them are quiet, I, I can't imagine they're not always freaking out about this all the time. They're in a hospital because of things that happened to them under the pretense of a haunted house. She said it took five men to hold him down. And I don't know. How true that is because it's all coming from her. Sure. Medical records, where are they? And I need them. Not a huge surprise. Someone called DCS mm-hmm. and to investigate possible alleged child mm-hmm. abuse or neglect. And the caller, obviously not named, speculated that Ammons might have mental illness. Mm-hmm. A legitimate Alleged claim. Sure. Oh, I think it's with all of this, it comes from a place of trying to figure out what's going on and, and using the the most reasonable types of methodologies to do that. So you don't jump directly to ghosts. It's all these other things first. That person also believed that the children were putting on a show is similar to the episode we did, the Enfield haunting. Mm-hmm. That we did that. It was in England. It's a pretty famous, at least the photos are a pretty famous case. I mean, it seemed like everyone was kind of in on it in the family for attention or, or whatever kind of came with that. The photos are legitimately terrifying. DCS case manager Valerie Washington was asked to handle the initial investigation, and she gave an account to the police in her intake report. Hospital personnel examined Ammons and her children and found them to be healthy and free of marks or bruises. A hospital psychiatrist evaluated Ammons and determined she was of sound mind. Valerie Washington interviewed the family in the hospital. When she spoke with Ammons, the seven-year-old boy started growling with his teeth showing and his eyes rolled back in his head. The boy then locks his hands around his older brother's throat, refused to let go until adults pried them off. I keep forgetting, too, that this is 2014. Right? This is – yes, this is I, – I think this was between tw- – this might be around 2012. Okay. The kind of made public version of this was 2014. Okay. This is still at a point where people have smartphones. I keep forgetting. I When you're talking about this, it feels it's from the 80s, the 70s, lots of s- stories that we've covered from that era. But now that I'm – yeah, we're in the 2011, 2014. People have phones. People can take pictures really easily at that point. Where are the photos? And again, some of these things could be performative. Yeah. So it's not, oh, they flew up into outer space Mm -hmm. and then came back down. Later, Washington and registered nurse Willie Lee Walker brought the two boys into a small examination room for an interview. And Rosa Campbell, grandmother, joined them. The seven-year-old stared into his brother's eyes and began to growl again. It's time to die, the boy said in a deep a natural voice, I will kill you. Mm. Now, my sisters used to do that every Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> but threats. they just did it in their normal voice because they're like, no, no, this is just me. Yeah. I want to kill you. There's nothing in me but me <laughs> yes. wanting to kill you. Campbell grabbed her grandson's hands and started praying. Mm. According to Washington's original DCS report. And again, all these things are according to this. 
there's no proof. Yeah, there's no ancillary. This is a reported yeah. thing, and and how much of it is true, and yeah, who yeah. is, and the person reporting on it. There might be just presenting it in a way of this is what I was told. Here's the information. Mm-hmm. We're in Gary, Indiana. It's not a federal case or anything. This is corroborated by Walker, who's a registered nurse, who, by the way, which I was was not surprised to find out, also very religious, mm-hmm. very susceptible to believe in these things. Yeah. He said the nine-year-old had a weird grin and walked backwards up a wall to the ceiling, then flipped over Campbell landing on his feet, and he never let go of the grandmother's hand. Take a picture of this. I need to see this. He walked up the wall, flipped over Hood, and stood there, Walker told the star. There's no way he could have done that. He's holding his grandmother's hand through all of this. Yes. What acrobatics. Later, police asked Washington whether the boy had run up the wall. As though performing an acrobatic trick, and Washington told them that that's not what happened, that the boy glided backwards on the floor, wall, and ceiling. I don't know how he got up to the ceiling. I don't know. So he made it kind of seem like he did something similar to that, but it was just in a very yeah. easily done human way, especially for you know, kids can jump and flip and mm-hmm. have the energy to, to do those things. And Washington did not respond to the star's request for comment. The indie star, you know, a lot of their the articles I saw from them are very they lean towards this is the sensationalism and I, I don't know much about the indie star. Mm-hmm. They can do what they want. And again, there's not a ton of information on this, so I take everything with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. She told the police that she was scared when it happened and ran out of the room. Yeah, no and shit. Walker ran out of the room with me. But I think, at least for Washington, it seemed like she was seeing this. Hey, this is out of my pay. This is above my pay grade. Mm-hmm. And Walker's, I believe in this stuff. So I think it's real. Mm-hmm. And the doctor asked, hey, can you do that? And the kid said, I don't remember what happened and I can't do it. Walker, the registered nurse, previously believed in demons and spirits by previously, probably currently, and thought the boy's behavior had some demonic spirit to it, but was also a result of mental illness. So he was kind of on... Uh, that's interesting, too. I, yeah, I don't like, know how to... I mean, let's I guess split the two, difference here. Two things happen at the same time. Can they both be true? The skeptic in me says, uh, no, because one of the things mm-hmm. isn't real. Yeah. Do they believe those things? That's definitely possible. Yeah, but I like the possibility that it's not just ghost inhabiting someone's human body. I, I it's oh well, this could also be a part of it too. Well, if you're a, a medical professional in some mm-hmm. way, and you you tend to lean towards the things that are not scientific, mm-hmm. it's probably not great for your career. And no, it, and if you had any kind of medical training, whether you're a a nurse or a doctor or a psychiatrist, psychologist, or whatever the case may be, you've learned science to get there unless you are a faith healer of some sort. But these are yeah. medical professionals. Yeah. But again, it's it's all contextual. So the most professional medical doctor, nurse, whatever practitioner probably skews a little bit religious in that area. And Washington said that she believed that there could be an evil influence affecting the family, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Next day was the youngest son's eighth birthday, seven Oof, to eight. Ammon birthday. said that DCS officials asked Campbell to bring the older children back to the hospital, presumably to talk more about what happened. The family celebrated the birthday, singing and eating a miniature cake. A mini cake? Yeah, a mini cake. That's too small for a family. And I mean, it's cute, but it's too small. I guess it's at the hospital. Then Ammon said that Washington told them that the children were not going back with them. Okay. On the, this is on the birthday. Yeah. And happy DCS birthday. did what DCS does. And I don't know if there's a difference between DCS and CPS. That might be just a new – I don't know if it's now called DCS yeah. and not CPS. I don't know, but DCS. And they took custody of the children without a court order. And Washington wrote, Washington wrote in the DCS form that all the children were experiencing spiritual and emotional distress. So that's of you can you can have spiritual distress without Being, seeing ghosts and stuff yeah. like that. You can just have a crisis of faith or whatever, whatever that means. Yeah, that's the first diagnosis that I can really get on board with. Reverend Michael Magano was leading a Bible study in his living room on April twentieth, two thousand twelve, when he received a call from a hospital chaplain. The chaplain asked to perform an exorcism on Ammon's nine year old son. 
And he agreed to interview the family after Sunday Mass a few days later. And he ruled out natural causes for what they were experiencing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he, as a priest... Is a doctor now. You ruled out the, <laughs> the science of it. Sure. I, I don't know how that Was happened. it at 2 a.m.? Was there a mini cake? I don't know. But they detailed the phenomenon for him and then was interrupted by Campbell to point out that there was a flickering bathroom light. Fine. It could be faulty wiring, <laughs> but let's just go with it. The flickering stopped each time Magano walked over to investigate, which he attributed to a demonic presence. It must be scared of me, he later told the star, the indie star. Mm -hmm. The interview was erupted again when Campbell pointed out that Venetian blinds in the kitchen swinging even though there was no air current. And he also saw wet footprints in the living room. Wipe your feet. Ghosts, wipe your feet. And then Ammons complained about having a headache. Magano said that she convulsed while he placed a crucifix on her head. After a four-hour interview, Magano said he was convinced that the family was being tormented by demons and he also believed that there were ghosts in the house. He blessed the house, praying, reading from the Bible, sprinkling holy water in each room. He told them to leave. It wasn't safe. And they temporarily moved in with a relative. Again, I don't know if that's true. It makes the story seem more believable, though, that they yeah. are taking these steps. But there's no corroboration of it. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And then mother, grandmother are back in the house about a week later. And the case manager comes back to check on the home. Mm -hmm. Police officer came, the two officers, one from Gary and Hammond Police Departments, asked to join them out of professional curiosity. Ammons wouldn't go back in the house, but Campbell agreed to accompany them, police officers, and the DCS worker into the house. Directly under the stairs was a dirt floor. The concrete around it was all jagged, though it had been broken. A makeshift altar Ammons created was still in place along with rings of salt. She poured a along the basement walls, we've seen that, mm -hmm. to dissuade the demons. Campbell told officers that demons seemed to emanate from beneath the stairs. Austin, the Gary police captain, who is very susceptible to this, we find yes. out, which is not a huge surprise and taking yeah. very long to figure that out, but that's true. He said that he believed in ghosts and the supernatural, but he didn't believe in demons. I don't know what. Where do the, you draw the line? <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that makes you seem. Well, also, the supernatural is there's demons baked into that. I don't you know. know what constitutes, you know. Yeah, I don't know do you believe in fairies? I, yeah, I don't. A nymph? I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. know. Orbs. He says no on orbs. <laughs> he just Hard told no. me. He just Hard told no me on orbs. Mind. Okay, okay. He once didn't believe in demons, but after visiting this house, now demons are on the menu. Oh, demons are on the table now. You just need to, you need 200 of them to really be convinced. During the interview with Campbell, one of the audio recorders malfunctioned, according to Austin and Hammond police reports. The power light flashed to indicate the batteries were dying, even though the officer had placed fresh batteries in the recorder earlier that day. Another officer recorded audio. When he played it back, he heard an unknown voice whisper, Hey! According to Lake County police records. Hmm. That officer took photos of the house. In one photo of the basement, there's a cloudy white image in the right-hand corner that resembled a face. We're going to find that they is is perpetuated that that's official police photography. The police chief was that's not our that's yeah. this police officer's picture that the Indy Star used in their article. Yeah, where's the police? Where's the banker box full of police stuff? That's what I want to see. He snapped photos with his iPhone, had strange silhouettes in them. And his Ford malfunctioned on the way home. But I remember when, uh, the Los Feliz murder house, mm -hmm. I said that I was having issues. Yeah. And again, now I believe in demons. I didn't before. So yeah. he said that the driver's seat in his personal 2005 Infinity, weird flex. <laughs> Sounds cool though. <laughs> yeah. Also started moving backwards and forwards on its own. He said he had the car checked to the dealership. The mechanic told him the motor on the driver's seat was broken which the mechanic said could have caused a distraction leading to an accident, as if they're, they kind of got latched onto him. Mm. And then he started to believe the claims of paranormal activity. This is Austin, the police officer. Mm -hmm. But the mental health professionals remain skeptical, I hope. DCS petitioned Lake Juvenile Court for temporary wardship of the children, and they found that Ammons neglected her children's education by not having them in school regularly. Mm -hmm. They made the same finding in 2009, so her... Issues with DCS go back. Yeah. This isn't a first time, and that's not a surprise. There was times where she couldn't send the kids to school because the spirits would make them sick. 
or they'd be up all night without sleep. I it's see a very God sick home. Yeah. And I take God sick to one of the highest degrees. Mm-hmm. This is all kind of, again, makes more logical sense now that we have this history. Two of the kids went to a home in East Chicago. The youngest son went to Christian Haven in Wheatfield for evaluation. Maybe he was the one who kind of is the youngest and, and probably is the developmentally is probably having the most trouble with, mm-hmm. with probably what's going on. There's a lot of screaming and a yeah. lot of intensity. And a clinical psychologist, Stacy Wright, who evaluated the son, he tended to act possessed when he was challenged. He switched to that, which we found in a, a lot of things. It's kind of, oh, mm-hmm. I, I don't like the way this is going. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm going to do in retaliation, which – is not different than a lot of children. It just mm-hmm. usually doesn't go the way of, oh, I know when I act, or roll my eyes in my head, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I get a reaction. Yeah, you're getting uh, reinforced behavior when you face resistance and people are, oh, no. And again, most parents would be like, cut that out. These parents would not say that. In her evaluation, she wrote that he seemed coherent and logical, except when he talked about demons. Mm-mm. And then his stories became bizarre, fragmented, and illogical. His stories changed each time he told them. He also changed the subject, quizzing right on math problems and asking her about outer space. Hmm. Which is a curious kid. Yeah, a kid. Can you die if you go into space, he asked. How do you get to space? Do you have to wear a helmet and suit? Kind of normal. Yeah, like kids. Things I'm curious about. Yeah, exactly. You ask those questions all the time. All the time, and I still haven't got an answer. And she believed that the eight-year-old did not suffer from a true psychotic disorder, probably con- conditioning where I do this and then this happens. Mm-hmm. And kids are smart. They know cats do that. Our yeah, cats exactly. have us under their very firm but unjust grip. Unjust, for sure. But they know if they do this, they get that. Yeah. And it's should this is just delusion. And it's in the house and it comes from the mother and grandmother and it's a pressure cooker essentially Mm -hmm. of of this and then psychologist evaluated the other kids same thing and they needed to assess what's going on in the home Mm -hmm. what's what's making this because it's not going to get better by leaving it alone yeah and Evan's daughter told schwartz the psychologist that she saw shadowy figures in the home she says twice she went to a trance and the older son told Schwartz that doors were slam and stuff started moving around. Did not seem to be experiencing symptoms of psychosis or thought disorder. And one psychologist recommended that Ammons be assessed to determine whether her religiosity may be masking underlying delusional ideations or perceptual disturbances. Yeah, that's a, that's a mouthful. And they still stuck to their guns, though. They, well, of course, of course. They worked with DCS. They had supervised visits. Ammons had to find a job and appropriate housing due to the paranormal activity, the house at Carolina Street. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, this feels very the haunted story version of The Undoing, where it's the logical thing. Sorry, spoilers. The the logical thing uh, is you're using these demons and this demonology and this religious zealotry to cover up abuses and trauma. And not even to cover it up, but to, to help survive it. In a way. So in another investigation of the home, it took a police dog. Didn't really find anything interesting. Nothing? No, but everyone headed to the basement, and there was strange liquid dripping in the basement. It felt slippery. Then Magano, the Mm -hmm. priest, he wanted to check the dirt under the stairs for a pentagram or personal objects that may have been cursed. He said a pentagram might indicate a demonic presence. That would be odd to find. Yeah, that would be pretty specific. Yeah. Or a possible portal to hell. We've got to look for portals. We, If you're not looking for portals and you are a priest, uh, you're not doing your job. And portals to hell are usually your department. <laughs> That's usually how your episodes, a couple of them ended up. Just in the Midwest where we are. Oh, hell yeah. The Midwest loves their portals to I'm hell. Gonna write a, you wrote a book, but I'm going to write a book about portals to hell. It's going to be short, but and poorly researched. One of the police officers dug a four by three hole beneath the stairs. Mm-hmm. They found a pink press-on fingernail, a white pair of panties. Got them. hate saying that word, panties. Very weird. <laughs> it's not a good a word. A political shirt pin. What? A, a lid. Gary Hart. <laughs> a Mondale. I don't I'm know. Sure. A lid for a small cooking pan, socks with the bottoms cut below the ankles, candy wrappers, 
and a heavy metal object that looked like a weight for a drapery cord or – Okay. So just like Yeah, a weight. Yeah, drapery Gross cord. Gross human debris. Magno blessed some salt, did his thing. Sure. Somebody that was part of the group said that her left pinky finger started to tingle and whitened. She complained it felt broken. And then this woman who was also there felt that she, she was having a panic attack. She couldn't breathe. So she walked outside to wait for the group. When we went to the Janice Joplin room, I felt a little uh, – I was very uneasy and I think – and some other people did too. And I think it's just very suggestive. Yeah. You can really go down that path if you are given the psychological green light. Some of the priests did – Intense blessings. Magno performed a minor exorcism on Ammons. Minor. Prayers, statements, and mm-hmm. appeals to cast out demons. So this is still – it's still going on. It's still happening. But the kids are away, at least. Yeah, the kids Thankfully. are away. Bishop Melzek gave permission to exorcise Ammons in a ritualistic way, and he performed three on her. Two in English, the last one in Latin, in June 2012 at his Maryville Church. Praise God, condemned the devil, pressed a crucifix on her head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She freaked out. And the two officers that kept in touch with Magno since the investigation were there just in case she needed to be restrained. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know how – I feel this is – I don't know if they're they're on official business or not. It's, it's hard to say. So a lot of this information is – it's really hearsay. It's all hearsay because there's no – literally yeah. no documentation. There's there's no citations mm-hmm. or anything. And I'm, I guess if somebody have dug deep because – well, we're going to find out who's dug deep on this one. Oh, that yeah. That kind of made this famous. Who dug deep? The final exorcism was in June 2012. The police officers did not attend. They were, we're good. Yeah. I'm, I'm up to my gills in weird shit with this house. That was the last time that Ammon saw Magano. She and her mother drove back to Indianapolis where they, at least as of this article, live without fear. Obviously, the home became very popular. No one has experienced anything in that house. Since. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. and We're going to find out why. <gasps> Are you familiar with Ghost Adventurers? Yes, I am. Well, Zach Baggins was very famous and beloved mm-hmm. member of the paranormal world. Yeah. He bought the house for $35,000. That's a steal. And he made a documentary on it. If you want, I don't, some people say it's a documentary. Some people say that it's a documentary, mm-hmm. but it's not a doc. The skeptics <laughs> say one thing, mm-hmm. other people say another. Did he for, cast 200 demons? It's called Demon House. Okay. Okay. In, 2000 that was in 2014 where this all is happening in 2016 so he made the documentary in that mm-hmm. time and in 2016 he had the house demolished what it's why do you, why do you think that he would do that so no one else could have could corner the market on that story that house that's where my brain goes some people, I'm sure he will say, and again, I don't know. Yeah, he'll say it's too haunted. It's we, too I had haunted. Bit, whatever. Other people say he had it destroyed. It, there might be a financial reason too. Mm-hmm. It, it could be this is house isn't worth it. You know, a real estate yeah. person could be carbon listening. monoxide. Uh, yeah, or, or it's well, I'd rather have it destroyed so people then can't go in there and be. There's nothing. Yeah, this is a exactly a ruse. So that's what skeptics would say. But that made this case very popular. Sure. Latoya Ammons in 2009, she had DCS warnings, missing school, and this was years before Mm -hmm. anything to do with the house. Her landlord said all the demon talk started when she fell behind on the rent. Interesting, interesting. So there's that. Her stepmother went on record stating that she doesn't believe her. She says mental health issues. The stories were making life difficult for Latoya's siblings Mm -hmm. because they're – we're not down with this. Yeah. And Don't associate us with this behavior. Latoya Ammons, you know, mm-hmm. has been in the, speaking to newspapers and, and news outlets pretty regularly. The reason she didn't do the documentary or mm-hmm. wasn't available to be interviewed, because she already made allegedly, supposedly, a deal for her own mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> book, movie, TV show. Were you waiting for that part? Of course. Of it's, course. I'm just wait. The optimism hate, around stuff is I hate that I'm such obvious. a cynic that I 
am literally looking for the instance where there's something that now that doesn't mean it's not true in every case but it always seems to happen mm-hmm. what does this person have to gain by doing this and what i believe that they could believe it mm-hmm. it's something that happened but also just the way the kids when they feel they're being challenged they're, well i'll just growl and yeah choke my brother and then maybe she's I'm falling behind on the rent. Mm-hmm. It's a coping whatever. mechanism and for it's all those tough. things. And, and yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm not passing judgment on their the situation. It's probably it, it probably tough for some of to make ends meet. And this all kind of worked in a way. And I, I hope that the, she's found what she's looking for. And I hope the kids are okay. Mm-hmm. Zach Baggins got his movie Demon House, sure. which again is. Probably a lot of the reason that we're talking about this because yeah. we did the episode on the Reseda House of Evil, not yeah. not very far from here, and we had Patty Negri from Ghost Adventures mm-hmm. speak on it. Brings this very interesting, very detailed story to life. Yeah, it gives it press. It gives it again a new, a renewed interest, and it it makes more opportunity for the people, the woman, the people that experienced it, quote unquote, more things that they could sell. I don't know. We're looking at it this le- in this lens of it's not real, it's skeptical, but and which is where I come from and believe because it seems very obvious to me through the the perhaps child abuse, the the economic downfalls, the opportunism around it all seems it's being covered up with all of the ghost shit. But also it gives people who are actually religious in that area a pretty bad name. Which is not someone – a group of people I usually defend. I'm not super religious myself. But that also feels really unfortunate. Yeah, I can't speak on the – what church life is or what people believe. But it, it it makes sense that it's in a place where people are probably raised a certain way or mm-hmm. they – they can take it and be become very god sick or mm-hmm. become very susceptible or 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 not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I believe in two hundred demons? I'm not there yet. Orbs, absolutely. Mm-hmm. 